Welcome everyone to Create Connects Questions and Answers with the Create New South Wales Art Form Advisory Boards. I'm Marilee Ray and I am one of the funding and development managers in the Arts and Culture team. And along with me is my colleague Ian Sifuentes, who is an application support coordinator, as well as Emily Collins and Nikki Brogan, who are both members of the Contemporary Music um, Arts Board. Um, so they are both here with us to share their insights on all things arts and cultural funding applications, and they would also be able to answer some of the questions that you might have. Um, so before we start, Uh, I would like to warmly acknowledge the First Nations custodians and knowledge holders of country throughout Australia, including the lands you are living and working, and joining us on this morning for this webinar. I acknowledge the Gadigal lands on which I am joining you all from and that Create New South Wales is situated on in the place that is now called Sydney. I give my deep respect to these elders past and present, I extend this warm respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples joining us today. Sovereignty never ceded. Hello and welcome. My name is Ian Cifuentes, and in a moment I'll introduce you to our guest speakers, Emily Collins and Nikki Brogan. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to go through some quick housekeeping. Uh, so this webinar is being recorded and, edit and an edited version will be published online. Uh, so please just keep your mics on mute. Um, for a better viewing experience, please click on the View Everyone tab in the top center of the screen and select View Active Cameras. Now, if you'd like to ask a question, please feel free to type them into the chat box, which you can access by clicking the speech bubble in the right corner and I will ask our guest speakers toward the end of the session. I uh, will try and get to as many questions as we can. Uh, if we don't get to you or if we run out of time, uh, you can just send us an email and, and we'll get back to you. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you today Emily, who is the Managing Director of Music New South Wales. She's also a contemporary music advocate Chair of the Australian Music Industry Network, panelist of the City of Sydney's Nightlife and Creative Sector Advisory Panel, and Nikki, uh, who is the Managing Director at FBI Radio, with prior roles as Copywriter, Content and Production Manager at the station, as well as having experience as freelance writer and native editor at Pedestrian Television. Emily and Nikki, thank you for your time being here. Thanks for having uh, us, Ian. Thanks. Cool. So I'd like to just pass it over to you both just to lead a little bit and share your experience and insights just around some common themes you've noticed in applications. So uh, kind of three main areas I think we could touch on. But first, maybe we can just begin with the budget and just things like um, what is in kind. Uh, figuring out salaries and, and what they're based on and, and paying people and paying themselves. Um, Emily, if you'd like to kick off. Sure, yeah. Um, so with, with budgets, um, I mean, actually, Ian, do you mind if we start sort of talk, like we might start with budgets a bit in a second, just because I think it's really good to talk about like the, the general pitch of a project first, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we'll come to budgets at the end, I think, just because that sort of helps sort of summarise everything else. Um, yeah, so, good. so I mean, one of the things that um, Nikki and I, as um, contemporary music board members, have noticed in a lot of the applications we see um, is that you know there is a really great um, depth and breadth of projects being um, pitched. You know, there's a lot of different types of applications: some for recording, some for touring. Um, some for collaborative projects, some for 
um, you know, special projects in collaboration with other organisations. And so, when you're in, when you're applying to the board, there's usually a, a fairly strong mix of types of applications. So that's always something to keep in mind: is that not everyone's applying for the same thing. So everything we say today sort of will we'll take from a general approach and try and speak to specific application types. So, for example, if you're an individual artist and you're applying to create New South Wales for project funding, then that might be quite a different framing of an application than if you were from an organisation pitching for a, you know, a 12 month project. Um, so we might focus today a bit on the uh, independent artist um, style application, but any organisations in who are watching, feel free to ask questions that also apply to your um, applications. Um, and I think, and Nikki and I have had quite a lot of discussions around, you know, the pitfalls of, of grant writing generally, but also with, um, you know, uh, these applications for Create New South Wales. And usually the ideas are pretty good. It's just about how they're articulated and how people speak about their projects that, um, that I think is often where a lot of people fall down. You know, as assessors, we, we get sometimes, um, you know, quite a lot of applications to go through and so often the ones that really stand out are ones that we understand quickly so if if I have to sort of read through every single thing you've written to really get a sense of what you're asking for it often means that if you're having a if I'm having trouble understanding it then maybe you're having trouble articulating it which to me usually speaks to a bit of weakness in in how far along you are um, with with the idea and where you're at with the application um, Music New South Wales has um, quite a lot of resources around grant writing, which we're in the process of releasing. Um, we did a, a grant writing top 10, um, top 10 tips um, recently, which really look at um, sort of the various um, things to consider when applying for funding. Um, the first being that you're trying to convince someone to give you money. And if you're doing this, then you really need to be putting your best foot forward and be as organised and really convey, like, you know, you have to convince people as to why it's a good idea. And that means, like, being as organised as possible, being to the point so um, you know, we understand what you're asking for, and then really um, being able to demonstrate how it's a, a you know, a viable and um, I guess value for money style project because, you know, it's government and they're investing in your work. So they want to know what they're going to get for, for supporting you. So I might just quickly go through the top 10 and I'll also post it in the chat so you can all access it later. Um, but just because we've got it, I thought it'd just be a nice way to start um, in how you know we talk about funding um, in, in what we do. So um, the first one is having realistic expectations, which isn't really a grant writing tip as much as it is about setting the scene. So, you know, various funding rounds, both within Create New South Wales and with Australia Council or local government or wherever you're applying, you rarely see, um, you know, more than 50% of applications getting funded. So, you know, sometimes they can be low as 15% of applications being funded, sometimes it's higher, really depends on how competitive the grant round is. So we really encourage people to, uh, you know, put in as many applications as you can, simply because there's every chance that you're, you've written a great application, but there's simply not enough money available in the pool. So just, um, yeah, always consider that like it's really good to put in grant applications, but there's actually generally a fairly reasonable chance that you won't be funded, not because your project's bad, but just because that it is competitive. So um, I know a lot of people have been disappointed recently with putting in funding applications and being knocked back, but all we can do is, you know, have realistic, all we can say is have realistic expectations and keep trying. Cause you, you know, if you keep trying and you learn from, from the feedback that you get, that uh, you will progress. Um, the other thing that we always tell people to do is prepare. Preparation is absolutely key. If you get to a grant deadline and you've got three days to go and you haven't asked for support letters and you haven't worked out exactly what you're applying for, then usually your chances of being successful are gonna be pretty low just because we can tell that you've rushed it. It's usually pretty evident, wouldn't you say, Nikki, that uh, um, if someone's really rushed through a grant that um, we can tell because just because it just in how it reads and how some things don't make sense. Definitely, and I think, yeah, around that, the clarity of how you're kind of getting across what it is that you're doing 
if you can speak to a friend who isn't attached to the project or a family member, if you're thinking about demonstrating what it is that you're trying to achieve uh, to someone who doesn't have experience with your project, um, that's kind of what makes it easy for us to understand what it is that you're aiming for. Yeah, absolutely. And part of that um, is also applying for the right grant. You'd be surprised the number of people who, um, you know, sort of shoehorn an idea into a, um, a funding avail a funding round just because they're looking for financial support that actually, you know, maybe the criteria isn't met or it's not necessarily a direct align with what the objectives of the funding round are. And often those objectives are really clear. So with CREATE, for example, they're looking to support, you know, arts and cultural projects with a certain, you know, like uh, innovative, uh, you know, angle or, you know, like with each grant round, it'll be quite clear what the priorities of the funding body are, are looking for. Um, so just make sure that you're applying for the right grant because there's no one wants to see anyone waste any time or, or go through that rather torturous process to um, just be told that you're not eligible. Um, and getting another sort of top tip for us is um, get your budget right. If you if your funding body asks for your budget to balance, which most of them will, then you really need to um, make sure that happens. <laughs> um, and, you know, really following the criteria of what those budget allowances are. So if your salary for example or like if you're asking for but um wages for yourself uh you know and you include them in the grant but actually in this particular grant maybe they're not eligible so you just really need to be clear about that what you're applying for to be funded is eligible um and that it, it all balances because i think the budget is often where people fall down and we can come back to that in a minute um and this also is about paying people. So another top tip is if you're working with other creatives and if you're working with particularly like independent artists or you know uh, anyone who's working on your project, make sure you pay them and make sure you outline how you worked out how you pay them. So that's about uh, you know really speaking to you know if someone's got a set fee, you provide their quote that they've given you. Or if you're paying a musician, you might reference um, industry standard rates that you can include or, you know, say how you came to a figure rather than just saying, I'm paying um, Nikki Brogan $6,000. You say, I'm paying Nikki Brogan $6,000, which if you break it down is 17 days at, you know, $400 a day um, with a 10% contingency or whatever it is. Make sure that that detail is included because that will show us that you're not just making it up. Um, another thing that we really see is that people ha struggle to talk about their project. Um, you'd be absolutely amazed at the number of people who uh, put in a music application and don't speak about their music. Um, it, they might speak about the workshops they're doing or that they're releasing an album, but they won't tell us what the album is. So don't forget that like we are an art form board and music is an art form and we want to hear about what ideas and concepts you're exploring and that that really helps us to understand where the music fits into what you're pitching for. Um, you know, I think we can get really caught up in a lot of the detail around, you know, trying to have social impact or trying to, um, you know, plan out a publicity plan and that's what I want support for. But really, we also want to know what your music is and how you know why it's important that New South Wales and Australia and the world get to hear it. Um, another one, if you're not a great writer, get help. It's no 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 shame. Not everyone's a great writer. It's totally fine. But just ask for help if you can't, if you're having trouble articulating what you're trying to do, um, because that's often where people fall down. Is you know we can read you know 500 words on what your project is, and if it's not well articulated. Um, then often, yeah, that, it'll be hard for us to understand it. So getting getting help is really good. Um, other yep, top tips we have is that you know include as much detail as you can without making us read you know forty thousand words on on your project timeline. Um, so you know be really uh, precise about you know if you're planning a to release a record, talk to us about the dates and the timelines and at what point the strategy aligns with you know, whatever you're trying to achieve because um, it helps us have confidence that you know what you're doing and that it uh, 
and that you have a clear sense of what you're doing. Um, and the other point that we always just include is that if you don't know something or if you're not sure about what one of the questions is in the grant, call Create New South Wales because that's their job to help you understand the application form and to process, you know, all those different, you know, the language that's involved. It really is, um, you know, great to have such a great art agency who can support you through it. And also you can call Music New South Wales as well. We offer grant one-on-ones and grant support. And we're always trying to make sure that the music industry and musicians and, um, you know, uh, anyone who's trying to do great things around music in the state that they get support. So we're always trying to support people to get funding. So yeah, just if you're struggling, just ask for help. Anyway, they're, they're my top 10 sort of tips. And um, maybe Nikki and I can speak to budget in a bit and also about talking about um, how to talk about your project because <laughs> that's often where people fall down as well. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Emily. Thanks, Nikia. So yeah, maybe we can just uh, touch on that and, and kind of go f go from there for, about the budget and kind of expand a little bit. Yeah, sure. I mean, I just to start off with budget, I think a lot of artists don't <clears throat> don't necessarily think of themselves as numbers people or get a bit stressed about what it looks like to put values on parts of their project and put that on paper. Um, the budget and the timeline really help us to get a sense of the project. They should be reflective of what you're actually trying uh, to achieve. So there are uh, templates that are available through Create New South Wales. I think Music New South Wales also has a really great one uh, that can help you as a very starting point to think about what kinds of things go into creating a budget. Yeah, exactly. And, and your budgets will change depending on what you're applying for. So if you're applying to do a touring, uh, to do a tour of you know, regional New South Wales, then the, the sort of line items that you might include would be quite different if you were um, applying to record and release a new album. So um, Music New South Wales does have some budget templates just to give you an idea of the types of things that you might include in a budget. Um, we don't do the maths for you, you'll have to do that yourself. Um, but it's really about trying to give you a sense of the things that you can ask for, support for, and also things that um, are good to include because they let us know as assessors that you've considered um, all of the costs. So, for example, if you're if you uh, you know put in an application to record and release an album, but you forget to pay the engineer, then we're kind of going to go, hey, this isn't quite, this doesn't add up. Um, one thing that we have also um, encountered um, through all of our assessing is that people often struggle with in-kind value. Um, that's a really common pitfall, I think, not just for the music crowd but for everyone and that's um, something that we have uh, it's it's in some senses a, a difficult thing to articulate but the way we explain it at Music New South Wales is that it's basically contra or pro bono things that people provide to your project <clears throat> that add value to your project so for example you might be doing a tour of regional New South Wales and you uh, you um, you know get offered free accommodation as part of the deal you've arranged with the pub that you're playing at. Um, you can add that uh, value of that, which you might, you know, ask the venue, what does this normally cost? And they'll say, oh, it's 200 bucks a night. And so you go, okay, cool. We're staying there one night for free. So it's $200 of in-kind value added to your budget. That lets us as assessors know the sort of total financial value of the project as separate to the cash value. So we want to know that, you know, even though it's, you're only asking for $10,000, um, that actually this is a project that's worth a lot more and therefore it's good value for money. Um, the thing well, I will say about in-kind um, value is that it can often make budgets a bit confusing because it's adding in a value that's not cash. So but just be sure when you're doing a budget and you're adding in-kind value that you also um, it, take it out. So we have a rule with in kind, what goes in must come out. So if you say there's, you know, you've got $2,000 of your own income plus $5,000 of Create New South Wales income and then $2,000 of in kind income, 
you know, your total project value is $9,000, but there's only $7,000 of cash to spend. So when you're in your expenditure, make sure that if you're getting $2,000 of in-kind value, that it also comes out the bottom. This is quite a tricky thing to explain and probably not done well verbally. We've got some stuff on our website, which helps sort of outline um, what in-kind is. And also if you're confused, just call us because it's a, it's a, it's, it's very much a arts funding sort of um, thing that I don't think many businesses outside of um, you know the arts world have really encountered. And I often you know I have festivals call me and go, "What is in kind? And is that just contract?" You know, so um, you know don't feel don't feel bad if you don't understand it. It can be a bit of a weird one, but um, it is really good to include because it gives us a sense of um, how connected you are as well. Like if someone's willing to offer you um, in kind value, whether it's like discounted engineer rates or discounted merchandise rates or, you know, whatever it is. And it's usually like services, um, discounted products, if that's applicable or, you know, like accommodation, venue hire, things like that, that where you can get a discount and, you know, we're making sure that discount is articulated because it helps us know that the project has a bigger value than what we're investing in. That's so awesome. kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really helpful. So yeah, thanks, thanks for that. That's um, yeah, really valuable stuff. You talked earlier a little bit about uh, just the, the vision, and I thought maybe we could just how how can an applicant, or, or in terms of the the application, how to how to sell the vision or how to describe your project or any anything around that yeah i can speak to, we've got a bit of a guide but uh, nikki also um has a, a whole lot of thoughts on this one as well um i'm happy to nikki do you want me to just rattle through my list and then yeah let's start with that jump. um so the it's it's it is hard to convey um to people who are applying for funding, how to talk about their their work in a way that's, um, I guess, you know, inspiring to us as assessors. You know, we're, keep in mind we've done a lot of reading. We can get bored very easily. Anything that like stands out is always lovely. Um, but it's it's also important to include less like the, the basics. So you know, your who, your what, your when, your where, your you know, your partners, all those things. And sometimes just that really basic summary of what you're trying to do is where people fail to articulate it so uh, sometimes you'll read like a hundred word description of of what the project is and i'll be like i still don't think i know what it is <laughs> so um just keep those you know descriptions really basic you know i'm applying for money to tour new south wales or, you know let's do six tour dates um in january 2022 or whatever it is just really basic what is it that you're applying for and those things um, really help, uh, I guess, give us confidence that you know what it is as well. <laughs> um, uh, don't, like Nikki said before, don't assume that people know what you're talking about. Um, assume that we're, we don't know who you are, that we've never heard of you, that we don't know that you've got, you know, 17 albums and RA awards under your belt. Like, just assume we don't know anything and write it from a viewpoint of this is who I am, this is my experience, because that's really helpful. Um, yeah, try not to be too, um, use plain English where you can. It helps us if, you know, don't, don't feel that you're applying for art funding, therefore you have to speak in an art language. Um, often we find that a bit difficult to read <laughs> when people try and do it. So yeah, keeping it simple is always great. Um, uh, what else have we got? Um, the thing that Nikki and I have spoken a lot about is that trouble people have with talking about impact um, and how that how people talk about um, what their work means to them or their community or their audiences or to the broader you know society um, Nikki do you want to speak to some of that because I know we've spoken about it quite a bit right so yeah I mean tying that back to the idea of a clear application it really is about that value proposition because you are competing against your peers uh, they're putting forward what it is that they want to do as well um, so it is really important to kind of articulate what the benefits are it's okay for you to talk about what the benefits are for you as an artist um, it's important that you think about the benefits for the audience 
um, being able to kind of pull those things together in a way that helps show that the project is considered um, really is what that impact is about. Um, on the flip side, it's quite hard with music. It feels like uh, often we've had conversations within the board where people almost dull the vibrancy of what their work is when they think about that impact um, and it mm. becomes almost just a sea of words that you're reading. Um, so yes, there's a, a word count that sits there and there are prompts that help you think about what that impact is, but uh, it's also okay for you to think about yourself as an artist and bring that into the application that you're pulling together. And also don't underestimate the value of um, fun and music and dancing and, and, you know, enjoying music as an audience and sharing your music with audiences. Often people think about impact um, and they're like, oh, I need, I'm going to deliver 12 workshops. You know, I'm going to do a tour and then I'm also going to do 12 workshops to train um, children how to, in, you know, very important things. It's like, you don't have to add the workshop onto the tour in order for that tour to have value. The tour is valuable. We appreciate music. We see value in that. You know, uh, it's, it's important that those things happen. Um, not everything has to be um, so uh, directed towards, um, you know, saving the world. I don't know how to describe that. Like, um, it's sort of just like it, it, you're allowed to focus on, on music. It, it's not a selfish thing. It's a good thing. Um, the other thing I would say is, yeah, trying, don't, yeah, that's kind of like around the idea of not overstating your project's community benefit. Just let it be what it is. Um, and applications have word limits for a reason. <laughs> Because we want you to fill out that much, um, that word count, because it, we're looking for that amount of detail. So if you're responding with one sentence when the word count for that section is a thousand words, you're probably undercooking your application. And I would say probably don't bother because we're, we're looking for detail if there's significant, um, you know, word counts and, you know, and you know, conversely, when there's short word counts, it's because we're looking just for a summary. So really use those word counts to help indicate the amount of detail that you should be providing. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it in terms of the vision. Um, I, yeah, Nikki, do you have anything to talk about? It's really hard to tell people, you know, it's like you don't, can't just say, oh, be authentic, you know, or, um, you know, what does that mean to someone who thinks they are authentic, but maybe not talking about it, you know, so it really, when you are writing your grants, be yourself as much as you can. And, you know, if you're applying for a project, talk about why it excites you and why you think it's going to be great and why you want to do it. Um, those things are really important to us because we want to know that you're really passionate about it as well. And that usually comes across yeah, and then we get excited. A, a good way to do that too is thinking about how you use your supporting documentation and if you are getting those letters of support, who it is that you are leaning on for those. Uh, they can be really good bits of information that help round out uh, the application that you are putting together in a way that is a bit more reflective or often feels a bit more authentic to you as an artist or what it is that you're trying to create. Yeah, support material can be really valuable for, um, you know, I can tell you that I'm wonderful, but if someone else tells you I'm wonderful, that's way more powerful, you know, like it, support letters are a great chance for someone to, to vouch for you. And so choosing who those support letters are from is really good. You know, obviously your mum's not going to, I mean, I'd love to hear from your mum, but maybe, maybe not so relevant to the applications. Um, yeah, so really looking at, uh, um, Sorry, I just got to laugh at my colleague when I said that. Um, you know, I think it's good to like really talk about who you, or with the support letters, look at um, who the best people who can speak to what you have to offer are. And that, you know, yeah, yeah. Using them to, to back you, back you up and back you in is really good. One of the great things too, I think about uh, really making a, a really good effort at at bringing together some support letters and support materials. Often if you are talking to organizations or other artists and you are asking them to vouch for you, 
uh, it can address questions that you maybe haven't thought of when you're pulling together your own application. Um, it's almost like a bit of a practice run in being able to pitch what it is that you want to do or how you want someone involved if, if that person or organisation or peer uh, has questions or isn't quite sure about what it is that you're trying to pull together, that can be quite a good indication that maybe you should relook at what it is that you're proposing um, and, and rework how to make that as clear as possible. Absolutely. Those are really, really valuable information, Nikki and Emily. So thank you so much um, for those. Um, we do have a few questions from um, the people who registered for this um, webinar, as well as uh, we're getting a few questions um, over in the chat, I think. Um, but maybe we'll start off with the questions from the registrations. Um, the first one is, and you've touched upon this quite um, quite a bit already, but they have asked um, to please explain what you want to see in a budget and how does an applicant how does an applicant make their application be viewed positive, positively by panel members um, as well as how detailed should you be in your budget i think Nikki? for me yeah the the budget and the timeline seeing it be reflective of what it is that you are trying to achieve is one of the main um, considerations that the board uh, would look into. So uh, M had a great kind of example before where if you are thinking about producing a work, we want to understand that you have looked at what is involved in bringing that to life beyond what it is that your own efforts or investment might be. So um, it is a bit hard to give specifics because there are so many different types of projects that people do apply for. Uh, but I think with the tips that M gave before, thinking about what goes into your project in its entirety, some of that may be what you're asking for an investment from Create New South Wales for, some of it may be in kind, um, and really being able to demonstrate that value proposition in the application uh, in a way that is reflective of the timeline that you've proposed and the, the actual project and those targets that you have for the project. Um, we want to see those things aligned. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Ian, did you want to go through the next couple of questions? Yeah, so we, we had a question for, yeah, as you kind of also touched on this um, around the word count. Um, Emily, Nikki, Nikki, is there any kind of shortcuts for getting the most important ideas uh, for someone that has a lot of information and just trying to get, uh, trying to cut it down. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it may be a, that they have a lot to, to kind of talk about and express, but with the, mm -hmm. the word count, um, yeah, was, is there anything like, any ideas or any thoughts around that? Just any kind of shortcuts? Or... I think, the, so what Nikki said before about like bouncing it off people <clears throat> who maybe aren't familiar with what you're trying to do is a great way to, to check that everything's been considered and that it is clear. But I mean, something as simple as who is involved, when are you trying to do this, um, what are you actually applying for, you know, like those real basic who, what, when, where, how questions are, are really vital and, you know, cliched because they're, they're useful, but um, they to just really get at, to convey an understanding or to convey the message to us around, um, you know, what you're actually trying to do. Because, um, you know, that you can have so many ideas, like, you know, you want to go on a tour because you want to, like, support regional communities and you want to do this and you want to do that. But, like, actually, you know, the first, particularly in the, the sort of first half of an application, you want to explain the basics just so we actually know uh, what's going to happen if we fund it. Um, and so, yeah, keeping it really simple and, you know, write down who, what, when, where, how, whatever, why as well. <laughs> I can't remember what the five are. Um, but, you know, keep those um, on a piece of paper and answer them. And if you can't answer them, then maybe you need to um, think a bit harder about what you're putting up. But, yeah, using really simple um, prompts like that to help you understand and, and frame um, the, what you're trying to pitch is, can be good, I guess. And start early, I would say. 
it's often that you will rewrite what it is that you submit a couple of times and it's okay to know that you have a small word count and you just write without the word count and think about all the stuff that you'd like to be able to talk about and then have a couple of goes at editing it from there to work out how you can make it fit and how it can still say what it is that you need for it to say. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Thank you both for that. Um, we have a question that refers to the current crazy climate that we've got, which is, um, you know, what are the key elements that businesses need to address in applications with regard to COVID? Do you have thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts on that would be that it would really depend on what they're applying for. So if you're a business like it depends what type of business you know if you're a place that is um you know if you're a venue or or, or um you know, performance space looking to host music then i would say you'd need to be um fairly cognizant of the new south wales state government guidelines around being a covid safe venue and ensuring that you're meeting best practice and all the um both uh, regulatory requirements and the recommendations around putting on covid safe events um i think even if you're a uh you know, touring artists, keeping COVID in consideration if you're planning on doing live performance um, is really important as well. So, um, you know, from from ensuring the safety of your um, collaborators, um, that you as you know as musicians are you know cleaning your instruments in a in a regular manner, um, and that you can just demonstrate that you have understanding around. Um, the health requirements um, relating to COVID is probably where I'd start. But I think from a, we don't have guidance just yet as to, you know, we're all sort of working this out as we go as well. And as board members, I think there'll be a conversation as a, as a panel around how we support and, you know, some of those checks and balances around um, supporting events that do um, have a, people turning up in in real life whatever that is um yeah so i think that will be you'll, you'll have a clear understanding but generally um, making sure that you understand the government guidelines is your best place to start exactly and yeah create new south wales have a few guidelines available on the website as well um Mickey, do you have anything to add to what emily has said I completely agree and I think it's worth keeping in mind that we all know that things are changing and they keep changing which means that we still want to understand what the aims are for your project what they look like while you're applying and potentially you know how you could change or innovate those things but uh, if you are successful it doesn't mean that uh, everything that's been put in that application is absolutely on lock and it can't be changed if the conditions around how you can pull that together can change. Um, I think, yeah, if people have a conversation with Create around what potential variations look like or any of those things that help to ensure that you can still uh, pull together the project or the piece of work that you've applied for in a new set of circumstances, which we're all trying to uh, adapt to, I guess. Great, awesome. Um, so we're also getting a few questions from um, on the chat box. Um, so let's just go through them now. Um, so we've got a question from Cheryl. Um, Cheryl has asked, what are the references for determining rates of pay for musicians, sound operators, etc.? So the, this is a highly contested area of um, the music industry is what is a, um, not highly contested. It's hard to get agreement from the industry around what a suitable rate of pay is um, for musicians. Uh, the Musicians Union of Australia has um, some guidance around um, how to, they have a, a rates calculator which you can use. Um, that's not specifically for contemporary music but is useful. Um, you know, I would say that whatever fee you put in articulating a, a base hourly rate so if you're paying someone fifteen dollars an hour i'm gonna say mm, i don't think that's good enough but you know anything <laughs> above minimum wage is 
eligible, but probably, you know, that you will get some concern from the, the board around what is a fair rate of pay. So um, referencing how you figured out your fee, whether it's that the band quoted you specifically on that fee, or whether you've allocated a certain amount of budget based on calculations, whether from the musicians union or whatever it is, that, yeah, that there's a clear rationale behind how you pitch those fees. Awesome. Thank you for that, Emily. Nikki, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's a really great way to kind of think about how um, to pull together, yeah, the information that, again, can helps demonstrate that you've considered what goes into that project. I just awesome. pasted the Musicians Union calculator link in the chat if anyone's interested. Okay, right. <laughs> Thank you for that, I'm Emily. Try, I'm trying to push for an Australian standard as well. It's just <laughs> hard to get everyone on board. <laughs> um, so Cheryl has asked, and I think this one is for um, Great New South Wales rather than um, Emily and Nikki. Um, so yeah, when there's an audio link for musicians, um, you know, sometimes it's quite limited um, because you can only put in a couple of links. So uh, one work around that is potentially for setting up either like a Dropbox or a Google Drive or a OneDrive folder where you can chuck in all of your um, your materials and all the links. And essentially, you know, you can then put just um, that one link for um, you know, like whatever that particular folder is. Um, and yeah, that, that's one way to get around the system a little bit. Um, the next, um, so um, Cheryl, hopefully that was helpful. Um, the next question is from Chris. Um, Chris says, given the current crisis with the music industry impacted by COVID, there's a huge need and competition for grants. Do you have any words of encouragement for independent emerging artists seeking small amounts to help with recording production costs um, in competition with established artists seeking funding for works that, that will have a high profile? Are the emerging artists in with a shout? Does, New South Wales, does Create New South Wales allocate an amount for emerging artists? Um, so you I'm happy to it. speak to that. Um, mm -hmm. So Create New South Wales have quick response grants that are really great for, um, you know, early career artists who are looking for, you know, rather quick turnaround support particular ah. projects. Um, they are, I think, open all the time. Correct me if I'm wrong, Marilee. Um, I think they're usually correct. Or just a, they're just always open. So if you something comes up and you're like, actually, I'm going to go on a tour or I need to record this thing, you can put an application that will. Um, it's not actually assessed by the Contemporary Music Board. It's assessed by Create New South Wales staff, and um, is you know it, a much quicker way of. Um, I guess getting a smaller support and I think the maximum of that is five thousand dollars um, whereas the project grants that Nikki and I assess are you know usually you know a bit higher um, so that is you know a good thing to keep in mind for anyone who's wanting some you know a, a quicker turnaround um, I'll also say that I really feel for um, early career artists and you know artists in general at the moment there is a lot of um, funding disappointment that is absolutely, you know, devastating for, for all of us. You know, I know how much work you all put into your applications and there's nothing worse than, you know, putting in so much work and then and being told you're not successful. So um, I feel for you, you know, it is really tough out there and don't feel like all these other people are getting money and you're not. The, there's a really high demand and it is tough time so you know we're with you we're, we're trying to make sure as many people get supported and it's a good mix of support from early career artists to also you know establish artists and businesses because we understand that we all need early career artists as well to support the music industry and that they play, play a really vital role in um that you know the functioning of the industry would um so yeah i feel for you there is there is definitely some you know funding Funding, I don't know what to call it, like funding trauma almost, you know, I've, no, I've seen a lot of people being really dismayed and disheartened and, you know, just know that as assessors, we really feel for you and, um, you know, 
hopefully this advice can help you be more successful and you know also call Music New South Wales if you want support. I can't support you on any Create New South Wales grants but my staff here can and also um, we can help support the like Australia Council funding so if you have any like just some advice give us a call and yeah we'll do whatever we can to help get some money out for the great work you do. Yeah. Um, so in addition to the small project grants, we also have the creative leadership program. Um, so, you know, that's, um, you know, we have various, um, um, you know, fellowships and opportunities for emerging artists under that particular program. So just, you know, keep an eye out um, for those on the website and definitely sign up to um, the Create New South Wales e-news. Um, so, you know, to hear about those opportunities. Um, but yeah, you know, we completely believe that, um, you know, um, new emerging artists can have as much of an impact as um, as established ones. So, you know, you're definitely in it with a chance. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, we also have another question from, just going through the chat box. Um, is there an indication of the size of the funding pool for this annual funding round? Um, you know, the quick answer is no. So the funding um, decisions is essentially um, at the ministerial level. Um, so basically, you know, the role of the, um, you know, the, um, the assessors is to make recommendations um, for, you know, which applications are to be funded and not with regards to like the actual um, pool of money at all. Cool. Um, Emily and Nikki, do you have anything to add to that? No. no. <laughs> yeah, <I think> so. <laughs> we, we deal with the money we're given uh, and that comes from create new south wales and and obviously the minister so um and sadly uh, you know we have no influence over that pool um which is probably lucky for create because if we did we'd take it all <laughs> um so we have a question from jessica newell um, what sorts of funding and activities are considered for funding? Um, and her second question is, what are the most common mistakes that people make when applying to this board? So maybe the first one, Nikki, can you answer to the types of project and activities that are considered? Yeah, sure. So there have also been new guidelines um, which have been released by CREATE, which also help um, to to shape what those projects are, which we can share um, in the chat box. But yeah, it, it really looking at those, um, I guess, looking at the guidelines as parameters for creations of new work, uh, for touring, for partnerships between different arts organisations. There really is a whole uh, bunch of ways that you can pull together an application that hopefully uh, helps to put forward the project that you're working on. And do you want me to speak to the second one, Marilyn? Yep. Um, so yeah, the second question is around, um, you know, what are the common mistakes that people make when applying to this particular board? Hmm. <laughs> it's a hard one. They're quite varied. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think. Usually one of the common mistakes is just that it's hard for us to understand what you're applying for. Um, you know, that's it maybe hasn't been well articulated. So, um, you know, circling back to previous advice, make sure that you, um, someone who doesn't know anything about what you do can read your application and, and get a sense of it. Um, I think uh, applying for too many things as part of one package, um, one, one grant is often a common mistake. So. I get a bit of, um, you know, like whiplash almost when someone's like, I'm going to do a tour and a publicity thing and then I'm going to record an album and then I'm going to do a workshop and it's like too many things so it's a bit confused and it's hard to convey to the assessors about what's involved. So I would always say like keep it as simple as possible, um, particularly with projects, don't put, unless they're really, really relevant to each other or um, necessary for, to, for both to happen, don't put more than one idea in an application because I mean so for example when two ideas might be useful is that to record and then release an album that makes sense but to like record and then tour and then or to record release then tour is a lot 
for us to consider because they're quite different applications and you have to include so much detail around who you're working with on the recording and the publicity thing, where the tool is going to be, what dates are locked in already, like it's a lot to do at once. I would suggest splitting that into two different applications um, just so the assessors can get a really clear sense of okay, this is a project around releasing music, this is a project around collaborating with dancers on this amazing new project that's this, uh, or this is you know like a bit more um, yeah sort of clearer clearer ideas that aren't too convoluted because it can be um, a lot to take in. <laughs> Any yeah, other common true. mistakes, Nikki? I think they're probably the main ones. Also, just the idea of people sometimes feeling like they need to uh, overstate what it is that their project is. I think, as Em said, there isn't anything wrong with keeping it simple. By keeping what you're proposing simple, it means you can do a really good job of demonstrating what goes into it, what the impacts are. Um, there is a whole lot of work that goes into uh, demonstrating all that stuff, even for an idea which may seem simple. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd completely yeah. agree. And budgets, like it's always budgets. People often just, you know, and something actually I always get asked um, with all well, the grant work we do is, is, you know, how to, you know, look what the budget strategy is, like trying to oversink around, oh, you know, the the, the grant's up to $20,000, so I'm going to apply for $19,999.99, and then I'm going to backfill everything to make sure that I spend that much money. That. I understand in some sense of the rationale, but really ask for the money that makes sense to what you're trying to do. And don't let the tail wag the dog, so to speak. Don't let the funding amounts determine what you do. Pitch to us your idea and put the appropriate costings next to it. And if your thing costs way more than the grant um, allows or to apply for, just talk about it as a partial investment in a broader project that you're sourcing funding from elsewhere. Um, yeah, don't um, try and, yeah, make it too complicated with that, with the money because, and you know, there really is not a, you know, so I get people asking like, oh, you know, what's a good amount to apply for? And it's like, well, it really depends on what you're doing. So let the project, like before you even look at the application, do a budget, what do I want to do? I want a tour, okay, how, where am I going to go? Seven dates. Okay, this much petrol, you know, or like do all the maths and let that determine what you ask for instead of the other way around. Very helpful information, Emily and Nikki. Um, we've got another question, this time from Harold. Um, Harold has asked, is there any common traits or trends that successful applications have had? So that's similar to um, the, a previous mm -hmm. question that we had before. So, um, you know, do you have anything else? So, so yeah, like, you know, having like a budget that makes sense, essentially, you know, a budget that sounds like, you know, that actually is reflective of what you're trying to do rather than, you know, one that, you know, fits within the, um, you know, the grant um, offering. <laughs> um, yeah, Nikki and Emily also mentioned, you know, um, you know, making sure that you really speak to your, um, you know, to your impact and to what you're yeah. trying to do. Also, you mm -hmm. know, just having really succinct, strong information in your application. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or... I, would, I would also add um, often the, the, th the applications that really speak to us mm -hmm. are ones that seem really timely for where you are in your career. So if you're an artist that's never been on tour before and you're applying for money to do a national tour of Australia and it seems like maybe a, a bit more that you've bitten off a bit more than you can chew, then um, we're probably less likely to think that it's a viable project. So really having an application that seems appropriate, a, a, a project that seems appropriate for your experience and the next stage in your career, and regardless of what stage that is. So if you're an early career, early career artist and you're looking to record an EP, that's perfect for you. Um, if you're going from having released no music to releasing an album, I'd probably say, you know, let's go back a step and, you know, let's talk about an EP and singles and, you know, building your, your profile publicly before you go straight to an album or, you know, whatever that is. So finding, a, yeah, a 
project that matches that's ready for you and the next thing you want to do is is what usually you know speaks to us as assessors going this is really a good application for this person's career if this makes sense yeah those successful applications we feel confident that they are realistic that there's been a demonstration that what is being put forward is something that has important impact but also is measurable and the person proposing this project can actually um, pull off what, what it is that uh, they're saying that they can do. And, and that's kind of why the budget and the timeline and all of those things kind of come together for, I guess they come together in a way that shows that the projects that get supported are very diverse in the types of projects, but they all feel realistic and they all have a measurable kind of impact. Yeah, yeah, and are well articulated. <laughs> it's always it's always that one. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's that's it. We just wanted to remind everyone, of course, that um, you know um, we at um, Create New South Wales are available to answer questions that you might have. Um, so we have our details um, on there on the slides for you, but you can also find our contact details directly off the Create New South Wales website. Um, so, yeah, no, everyone, you know, we do, unfortunately, that's all we have time for um, today. Um, we would like to thank everyone that's, um, that's attended this particular webinar. Um, a special thank you to um, the Create New South Wales staff that made this happen. But of course, most importantly, thank you so much to Emily and Nikki for being part of this um, and sharing their wonderful expertise on all things funding applications today. No problem, thank thanks for having us. Thank you. Um, so yeah, everyone, just a quick reminder again, please send your applications well before the 4.59 deadline on the Wednesday, um, just to ensure that that um, actually does get through. And um, yeah, feel free to get in touch with us um, if you need to. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Good luck. <laughs> Bye.